Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another Man 25 Next Gen Online game. Today we got the Baltimore Ravens and the Cincinnati Bengals. This is pretty much a winner go home game for the Ravens. For the Bengals, they need to try to win this game to either keep their seeding or improve it more. And plus, they're going for a perfect home record, so they're going to be trying to get that too. So, we're playing against Ushbag here, the man UB23, who I have mentioned a few times I have played him. So once more, his link will be in the description, he's a YouTube commentator and stuff, cool dude. So, um, yeah, his link's in the description, you want to check him out, check him out. He's got some cool man commentaries and stuff like that. And for this game here, he's got he's got the Bengals and I've got the Ravens. And there's one scenario I think where the Ravens could win and don't get in. And that's if oh man, we almost we should have gotten that pick there with Daryl Smith there. I'm not sure how we didn't. Like, I I do put his hands out, nothing happened. But um thankfully third down and seven comes up, and I believe we get the stop here, forcing Andy Dalton to run out. And not only do we get the stop, actually, we take the ginger soul. And this dude's taking it back for six here. Doomerville picks it up, and he is gone. Gresham's not catching him, and we stopped again great with a defensive touchdown. But yeah, there's one scenario if, like, the Chargers, Steelers, and Dolphins, and Ravens, all four of them all win. I believe the Dolphins are the teams that would make the playoffs and not the Ravens. Otherwise, the Ravens pretty much control their own destiny, so... It's gonna be a hell of a week, man. I can't wait for this this week, um Sunday to come up here because there's just so much riding on the line. Every single NFC seeding position is still up for grabs, as well as um as well as the second wild card spot between the um Saints and Cardinals. So, you know, I'm not sure. Just been this kind of a wild week in years where there's so much on the line in Week 17. Let alone, you know, the playoffs are coming up. There's so much on the line this week. So, you know, I'm really, it's just a diehard NFL fan. I'm excited to see what happens this week. So much on the line. So much teams are going to be playing hard for pretty much their season on the line. If not, you know, just trying to get a first round bye, which is so important. Home field advantage. A team like the Bengals would love to have home field advantage. Considering they are 7-0. and And not only are they 7-0, and they've looked dominant in their seven wins at home. Including, not only just like blowing teams out. Also beat the Patriots and Packers at home. So... You know, Bengals really need this. And here, Ushback, third down and six, tries to improvise there. But he ends up getting sacked by Doomerville. And he has to take the field goal here. And our offense finally gets to step on the field. And for the Ravens, I'm pretty sure they did the, just prefer their defense to be on the field more than their offense. Because their offense hasn't done jack lately. Um, Justin Tucker, they like him on the field as well. Special teams. Jacoby Jones, returning kicks. But when the offense comes out, not so much for the Ravens. Flacco, Ray Rice, offensive line, none of them are really, you know, producing this year. Here, three down and five. That's what Flacco's been doing this year, throwing interceptions. We throw an interception there, unfortunately, to, I think it's Ioka. That's how you say his name. And, um, I might have gotten that wrong. I probably got that wrong, but, um, I probably got closer. That's the first time I ever tried to say his name there. Never really knew he existed until a few weeks ago. Uh, you know, usually everybody's using Taylor Mays and Man and stuff like that. But you look up in real life, they're using Ioka, whoever that is. And there, that was a pretty good overthrow there by Dalton because um, I would that's Elam who had pretty good coverage there. Probably would have intercepted that if that was thrown on point. They're third down three. He converts to Gresham for the first down. Next play, running it with um, little Geo there. Little Geo getting some positive yards. Got a pretty decent rushing game so far. Four rushing for 22 yards. Next play, he runs out with um, Green Ellis there. He had Green Ellis in a, like, a block and then run out thing. And I was just a little bit late on that, unfortunately. So that was my bad. We give up the touchdown there. And we go down 7-10 to 10 in this game. Right before the two-minute warning. And... I'm just flush out the pocket here with Flacco. And that's one thing, though. Bengals, even without um, Geno Atkins, they still have a pretty fierce defense in line with Dunlap and Johnson and all of them. So there's still going to be a lot of pressure in my face here. So I got to watch out for that. And, you know, when the pressure doesn't come, I got to take off of Flacco and get some pretty good yards. Next play, we run a wide receiver screen here with Torrey Smith. And then watch this. Whoop! That's just not even a whoop. That's just a hurdle. And then another hurdle. Look at this dude. Or hurdling over two people. The fact that he hurdled over one player is, you know, ridiculous. He hurdles over a second one just for, you know, just for show, I guess. And there, Marlon Brown, speaking of just for show, decides he needs to try to one-hand snag this thing instead of, you know, take it with two hands. I don't know why. And we end up taking a sack there, unfortunately. Bringing up third down and very long. But in the middle of the field, there is Torrey Smith again there for the first down. And we somehow convert down one right for, you know, just in the middle of the two-minute drill here. Not in too much of a rush now that we're near the goal line. Try to take a shot. Shot there from Marlon Brown, but he cannot come up with it in traffic. Second down and 10. Give it to Tory here. And Tory flying over trying to get that first down. Look at the effort. Bringing up third down and two. And then I decide, you know, let me try out my trick play here. Let me try out my, well, not my trick play. This trick play here where I run the fake end around. And I actually throw it back to the wide receiver. But it doesn't work. And I end up fumbling the ball. 
Now, what I should have done there, as I should have, you know, actually ran the ball instead of doing the end around because it looked like I had a wide open lane there to get the touchdown. But I already predetermined I was pitching it to Tory, and that's one thing about that play that can make it somewhat dangerous is that you don't have to pitch it as Webb drops the pick there. You know, you can just keep it. And, you know, it kind of messes with opponents. Because there, I definitely should have kept it there. Because I think it was Dunlap there who was, like, in the way. And I ended up turning the ball over. And pretty much stupidity. I should have gotten at least three points. If probably not seven there, considering it was third down two. As Webb drops the damn pick again. Like, really, dude? And, um, you know, right before halftime ends, he's got to take a shot anywhere, anywhere. And he can't even get that off. But there's still a second left somehow. I'm like, really? That play felt like it took forever. And there's still a second left. We bring pressure, force him to chuck it up. And... I'm not sure who someone decides to drop it there. It's all good, though. We'll take this game into halftime and give it to Jacoby Jones here to return. We do get ball at half, so, you know, I'm not feeling, you know, too, you know, thinged up about not getting points at the end of the first half. Not too mad or anything. Look at Tory on these wide receiver screens. Tory's getting it done so far in this game. Four receptions for 103 yards. I try to go back to the screen, but Ushbag, you know, when you run... That's one thing I mentioned a few times. When you run that wide receiver screen a few times, you know, only a complete idiot doesn't pick up on it. So, he picked up on it, obviously, and, you know, he played it and maybe lose four yards. And I would have waited a little bit longer, and if I did, I probably would have gotten picked off there. So, you know, that's that. But here, third down 15, we end up converting once again. This time to Marlon Brown for the first down, but next play, Joe Flacco. Now, he has his soul taken away from him. I would have Vontez Burfick, who just completely crushed Flacco. And... I, I had no choice on that. I tried to step up in the pocket. Someone knocked me forward, and while I was stumbling forward, I just happened to stumble into Vontez Perfect, who lined up the kill shot on Flacco. And, dude, what what is does Webb, like, put butter on his hands before the game? Next play, Jimmy Smith here. I don't know there's someone Smith here. I can't say the damn word Smith right. And there's, like, at least 500 different Smiths on these Ravens. And then Jimmy decides he's blowing a coverage on AJ Green, of all people. So that was awesome. I like it when people blow coverages are one of the top five receivers in the NFL. And here, third down and six. Should have had that contained, but um, it's one of those weird things where um, like your linebacker or whatever moves like to the left when someone throws it to the right. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. It's like one of those kind of things. It's kind of weird. Look, speaking of weird things, Andy Dalton just took a read option for a touchdown. And once again, my dude Webb can't come up with a tackle. Like, yo, not only does he have butter fingers, he even misses tackles on gingers. Like, come on, dude. Like, what are you good for in this league? He hasn't done one good thing yet in this game. You know? And, oh, man. James, Jacoby Jones there just got lit up. So, now, all of a sudden, we're down by a lot of points here. Second down and three. And uh, I just thought, you know, let me try to make a big play here. Obviously, I should have thrown it away. But, um... You know, being in a friendly game and all with Ushba, I was like, you know what, let me just try to chuck this one up, man. And as we're getting intercepted by Ray there, and that might be the death nail of me. I got to definitely get a stop on this drive and then, you know, try to make things happen. But things don't go good. Right away, once again, someone blows the coverage in AJ Green. And, you know, this is awesome. You know, that's like the third time AJ Green's gotten, like, wide open. And that's like the 15th time that someone's batted a pass. So, you know, eventually we're going to have to fix that if we want to win this game. There, um, batted pass there. He tries to throw a goal line fade. Third down and five comes up, but the pressure comes. And and sacks Andy Dalton right for the end of the fourth quarter, which is exactly what we needed. Now all we need is to score a touchdown as soon as possible, and then hope we can get a stop from there. So that's the game plan right now. Right now, you know, we'll take it one step at a time. Right now, we need to get that touchdown. Going to be running a lot of hurry up on this um, drive here. Going to try to rush his, you know, just get in there as soon as possible and run some play action here. Joe Flacco going deep, but I don't know. He had to pass a little bit off there, and Ioka, I think, almost ended up picking that one off instead. And third down two, when in doubt, go to Tory. Okay, that's what's been working in this game. Tory. Just keep on throwing to Tory because why not? Next play, try to run a screen pass to Ray Rice, and we get some decent yards here. Probably could have gotten a little bit more. Try, I tried to do a spin move there to avoid the big hit there from Gino, I think it was. Second down and one, Ray Rice is wide open in the flats there. Trying to get this dude out of bounds, but he's like tiptoeing. I hate when they do that on this next gen. When people are just like tiptoeing. Like, I'm trying to get out of bounds. You're about to get killed if you don't get out of bounds in two seconds, Ray. Like, Jesus Christ. No wonder why he's only averaging like three yards per rush this season. Is he's too busy tiptoeing on sidelines. He threw that on inches, one and down. Go to Tory. That's what's been working all game long for me. And, um, Cox hasn't been killed too much. A little bit under two minutes killed so far. We're doing all right on this drive, but then I get sacked here. Carlos Dunlap ends up coming through. Next play, try to run the screen pass there, but he ends up running past my two blockers and almost intercepting that. Bringing up third down and 12, and when in doubt, you go to Tory in the middle of the field. Who cares if I believe that's perfect over there? Tory will come down with the next play. When in doubt, go to Tory, and we get a touchdown there. And that drive took a little bit longer than I wanted to, but the big thing is we got the touchdown before the two-minute warning, and now we got to try to stop him, and so far, no good. He runs to the outside with Green Ellis, and 
You know, I just couldn't stop. Look at damn Sorrel Sucks getting held out there. He's even that's one of those rare things with this putting his hands up there. He's like, I'm getting held out here, rest, but um, I don't they, think they call holding when there's running plays in this game, at least in the next gen, as far as I didn't know. So they didn't call it on Suggs there. And I just could not stop the running game for like a certain amount of time. And there, great catch and traffic there by Sanu. I was hoping, you know, he would drop that, but he couldn't. And then third down and one, um, huge bag runs it up the middle here with Green Ellis and gets the first down. And that one first down pretty much ends the game. So we're stuffing the middle here at Green Ellis, pretty much expecting the run every single down and green ellis killing some extra seconds on the clock second down and seven though this ends up being the dagger green ellis gets the edge and gets the first down and you know i this might be a sign for this game man i think the ravens might just begin their ass kicked by the Bengals. Bengals might be like this is our division now unless you know you guys say otherwise and that's pretty much the way this game went here i just could not really stop him at the end he didn't really clock me at the end but it didn't really matter cause i couldn't stop him even third down nine when i knew he was running he still got to the edge and you know there was this box on the edge to where you know no one's really making stops the next play run commit and you know first down touchdown you know it's just could not stop the run at the end there it was kind of weird because usually um the sugar buff works pretty well against the run but we couldn't get a stop there and we end up throwing an interception to end the game so that pretty much does it for this video unfortunately for us i guess so i wish back him that the win one more time check out his channels link will be in the description um hope you guys leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it subscribe for more man 25 online games we'll see if the ravens and Bengals game plays out like this one because there's a good chance it will considering how badly the ravens got whooped by the um patriots last week and how good the um, Bengals have been playing at home and um i'll catch you guys next time